If you've ever considered trying to engrave a photo with your laser, then you've probably already seen some of the many videos on how to walk through the tedium of using a tool like Photoshop or GIMP to get the settings just right for that perfect engrave. The real question is, do we really need to go through all of that effort? And if you'd like an answer to that question, then stick around. Hi, I'm Steve and I make everything and welcome back to the shop. Today we're not actually going to build something, instead we're going to answer an interesting question. And that is how to get settings proper for engraving a photo on your laser. Now, as I mentioned in the lead-in, there are hundreds if not thousands of videos on how to do this just right using a tool for like Photoshop or GIMP. And the real question I, I had when I started looking at this was, is that really necessary? And I, I thought, well, let's try a few things. We'll try uh, just an untouched photo or a grayscale, and then I'll do my best with a tool to try and massage it into something that's perfect. But then I'll, I'll take a look at some online tools as well that will do a lot of this stuff automatically for you. So with that, let's get going. Okay, so we're gonna try three different ways to engrave a photo on the laser. And the first one, is uh, essentially untouched. We just want the laser software to do what it, what it can do. And so we'll start with uh, just a picture that I, I took of uh, one of our dogs um, a while back. And it, you know, it's a nice pose, he's sitting on my knee. So this is the untouched photo. And what we'll do for this first one is uh, two things. We'll resize it so that it's it's something reasonable and we'll probably resize it again on the laser when we load it into software. And we know we're gonna, we're gonna engrave it at 150 uh, dots per inch. So we'll select that now just to make it easier. And so there we have our scaled photo. And let me zoom in a bit here. And so for the first one, we could, we could do it this way uh, just to try it. Uh, in fact, actually, let's just do that. That's the, the untouched one. So let's, let's export that as, uh, we'll say, original um, for print. And sorry. So we'll have that one as our first photo and the export there is fine. And then for the second sample of this, we'll, we'll also leave it essentially untouched. But what we'll do, the only thing we'll do different is we'll convert it to a grayscale. And we can just, that's just really to reference whether the color has any impact on the laser's natural software. So we'll export this again. And instead of original, we'll say uh, black and white uh, print. So, sorry, I'm reaching over my desk here to, to type. So there we have the black and white one. Now, for the next uh, sample, uh, We'll do something uh, simpler, like uh, see how well we can kind of tune this manually. So one of the things we'll do is it's already a black and white uh, uh, grayscale image. So we can play a little bit with some of the brightness and contrast. So when you're laser cutting, laser engraving, you generally want it to be pretty bright and you want it to also be fairly contrasty to sharpen everything up. So we can do this. You don't want to like blow it out completely like that uh, unless you were going for that kind of effect, but you do want it to be fairly contrasty where, but you can still make out the fine details. So you can see the, the hair under his eye and you know, his whiskers and whatnot. So, that's not bad for an initial set. We could change it later if we have to. Uh, and the other thing we'll do just to kind of bring out some of the, the finer detail and uh, hide some of the background a bit is 
just adjust the curve a, a bit. Not a lot. We're just, I mean, we could easily go crazy, but we won't do that. We'll just bring it down just a little to highlight these even more and kind of dull the background a bit more. And so there's our, our image. We're getting a little better. We might want to brighten that up a little bit more. Let's, let's do that while we're here and just bring it up. It, uh, I'll warn you in advance. It doesn't, it's not uh, the kind of photo you're going to want to just hang on the wall because it's really designed for laser uh, engraving. So there we brightened it up. Now the last thing we want to do for the laser is we want to dither this image because a laser just can't resolve that many shades of gray. So in, in GIMP, uh, they have this indexed color function and you can pick uh, a one, uh, basically a black and white one bit palette, which in effect is a dither. So anything that's gray is the algorithm decides whether it's black or white. And uh, we're choosing, there, there's a number of algorithms in, in GIMP and you can play with those if you want. Uh, I just normally use this one and it works, it works pretty well. So you can see, it's all now, if I zoom in a bit, you can see it's all made up of these tiny little pixels. So, um, so that should be pretty good. And we'll save that, we'll export that as, um, let's call it uh, our best image instead of the original, because it is no longer the original. So we'll say it's the best the best we can do by hand. All right. So now there's, there's one more thing we can try. So now we'll do our, th our fourth image. We have the currently the pr untouched photo, the original, we have one that is the original and all we did was convert it to a grayscale. Then we have our best effort to prepare one for laser engraving. And now we're going to use this imager tool, which is an online tool and you can use it for free and it works really nicely. Certainly by all means, um, donate to, uh, to these guys. If, uh, you feel so inclined, if you use it a lot. Um, so first thing we're going to do is upload our image and I'll start from the one that we had, which was just scaled down and, and, uh, converted to, uh, to, um, monarch just grayscale so it's it's essentially untouched uh, other than being converted to grayscale so we have it loaded we could certainly crop it or resize it and you can see it there now we're going to select our material and you can see it's the 150 dot per inch and the size is the right size so uh, so we can bring up the material dialogue and you'll see there's three tabs. I don't know who Norton is, but Norton seems to have a, a set of, of tools as well. And uh, you can see this one is specifically for diode lasers. And we'll choose the new profile for specifically for CO2 lasers because that's what we have. And uh, I'll print this on wood because the rest the other ones will also be set for that. So with that, it's gone off and built a, you can see our original and you can see the one it actually created. Again, like the one we did, it's dithered. Uh, it's even more contrasty than, than, than the one I created in GIMP. And, but it should work all right. And if you wanted, there's additional settings. You can mess with the brightness and contrast and things in here as well. Uh, you can also resize. But we're happy with that, so we'll just download that. And since the rest of our images are PNGs, we'll download them this way. And if I pull up my image here and bring it up on the right screen, you can see we have it loaded. So all I'm really gonna do here is I'll just export this as a PNG file uh, with, with alpha, just the default settings for uh, preview on the Mac and we'll call this uh, Elvis image or image dash R 
just so that we know it's the it's the right one. So with that, we're ready to to uh, lay these four images down on on the laser, and uh, we'll do that now. I've loaded all four images. The first image is the color, just the standard color image that we started with. It's oh, the only change was it was scaled down, uh, and we bump the dots per inch up to 150 to kind of maximize for what we're going to print. The second image is exactly the same image converted to grayscale. Image number three is the one I massaged in GIMP where I played with the uh, color palette, or the color curves a bit and uh, dithered it. And the fourth image is the one that Imager created for us automatically. Now one of the things I want to do is make sure that the settings for all of these are exactly the same. So they're all going to be halftone dither. They're all going to be 250 by 250. But for each of them, I'll set the power to maybe, uh, let's say, what's that, 85. And we'll set the speed down to about 70 or so. Uh, just so that it's dark enough. It, we're not going to burn them in too much because I want to see what the difference in detail is. But, uh, but it'll be dark enough that we should be able to see it. In fact, I'll go even a little, a little more on the power to maybe 88. So 88 and 70. And we'll set them all the same. So 88 and 70. Oops. 70 and make sure that stayed there, yes, and 88 and the last one, same deal. And uh, with that, we're, we're ready to engrave these and it'll just be a strip of four of them and we'll see what the differences look like. So I'll, I'll get that running and I'll record it just for uh, for interest and uh, we, we can see at the end what it looks like. So I'll, I'll, I'll start up the job. Okay, so let's see how we did. The first one is the just completely untouched. And you can see it actually did a really good job just dropping it into the laser and not doing anything. The uh, one we converted to grayscale is probably a little crisper. If you look right around the eye, you can see the eye here is much sharper. And then if we look at the one I did myself, you can see it's not too bad. There's a little less definition, especially around the nose area and certainly under the eye here. So I'd say it's not quite as good. And then the imager one where we literally just uploaded and pushed a button, uh, you can see it actually, it didn't really do a great job. So for this particular photo, uh, it I would say it's probably not what you'd want to use, you'd end up playing around just like we did uh, with their settings in in uh, GIMP, uh, as doing essentially the same things we did in GIMP. So I would say for this particular photo, it's probably a no-go for Imager, but I have used Imager for other things and it turned out quite nice, so I wouldn't discount it completely. But well, there you go, and you can see there's four different ways, ranging from do nothing and just load it up to use some tool and, and then a couple of things in between. So uh, pick the one you want. They all work fairly well, and, uh, you know, have fun with it. So there you have it, four copies of the same photo with the same settings on the laser engraved into a, a nice piece of uh, birch plywood. And the only real difference was what the photo looked like on the way into the laser when we uploaded it to the laser. And as you can see, really for just an effort versus uh, quality of output, 
convert the photo to grayscale and upload it to the laser. And it, nine times out of 10, it'll, it'll render very well actually. And, and you, know, you can avoid a whole bunch of time. So I guess the real question is, it, it, you know, to get back to where we started is, is it really worth all of that effort to watch these you know, many, many videos on how to use a tool like Photoshop or GIMP to, to get your settings just right? And the answer for most people is probably not. Uh, the Muse does a really good job and other lasers I've used as well do, do a good job. I'm sure the Glowforge or the, um, you know, the Boss or the Epilogue, they'll all do, you know, pretty well at handling a photo and just using some, some internal algorithm to render it correctly. But there are times when you actually might want to sit down and use something like Photoshop or GIMP. And I mean, I only scratched the surface here. I only touched like three different settings. Uh, I could have easily spent an hour or more to get the settings perfect. And yeah, I probably could have got a better rendering. But for the most part, if it's a Saturday afternoon and you just want to dump something out to your, your laser and get it done, it's probably not worth it. So with that, we can, we can wind down the video. Uh, just for kind of assistance on some of this, I'll put a video over here or over there, wherever it ends up uh, in the YouTube world uh, on, on materials, just to kind of walk through some of the material setting and how to gauge some of that. Uh, and if you're interested in that, it might help you here when you're doing your engraving. Um, uh, you know, go ahead and watch that. And if you're interested, I'll see you over there. Otherwise, uh, get out there and make your world and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.